Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. When it has to do with prophetic prayer of warfare and intercession, there are rules of engagement. There are pre three principal ways from scripture that Satan affects and even inflicts believers. Never forget these three. Number one, and the highest platform for his invitation into the life of the believer is called the power of covenants. Number two is ignorance. Number three is disobedience. These are the only as complicated as Satan looks. If he ever finds access to any life and any destiny, it must be one or more of these three platforms. And the way you close those doors and you deal with it differ. Covenants. You, when Satan is having access to a believer, a church, a business, an individual based on covenants, you don't cast him away. It takes the ministry of the blood. You see that now. The blood has an assignment to nullify covenants on legal basis because the blood has a voice. So there are rules of engagement. You've heard me say it. As powerful as God is, he could not cast sin out of man. To say, man, I am God and I am creator. The earth is mine. I cast sin. I declare you righteous. <laughs> the blood had to precede that speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. I think it was Isaiah 49 that says, Shall the prey be taken? The captive of the mighty and the prey from the terrible. He said, Thus said the Lord, even the lawful. There is a kind of captivity that is called lawful captivity. And the Bible is saying, even under that condition, there is still a provision in the economy of God where an individual can be free. Don't you think this is not an issue? There are many ignorant believers who do not know that covenants are a system of authorization. Listen, if I am a thief and I step into this assembly to pick this, if I hear any sound, what do I do? I run away because I am a thief. But let's say I meet, God forbid, but let's say I meet any of the ushers or somebody who is a worker in this church and he sells this for me and I pay him and I come to pick it. If I hear you coming, will I run away? Why? Because I paid for it. You are not going to tell me go away. You will have to bring a judge. There has to be a system of appeasal. That's what Jesus came to do. There are spirits that are not casted away. This kind you overcome them by the blood of the lamb. Believe me, this is, this is why many believers just pray all kinds of sincere and well-meaning prayer that does not produce power in the spirit because there are rules of engagement. I speak the blood, I plead the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry For you have paid the price The blood There are many demons were minding their business And many parents and individuals went and invited them And said I need assistance And they said we don't just give assistance They said I know I'm desperate. Fine. And later on, you just wave them off. You see, let me tell you this. I'm not glorifying Satan. When the missionaries came to Nigeria, listen carefully, they brought the evangelical dimension of the gospel. 
but many of them did not have the spiritual intelligence to understand the modus operandi of the kingdom they did not open us up to the dynamics of victory in its entirety many of them came and they did not even know why they died they just came to villages and brought the gospel and died some went back and now they did their best we must give them that honor except that personal and territorial revival let me challenge you go and study on the the revival in fiji island if you can go i'm sure it should be on youtube you go and read about the documentary they they killed and massacred some missionaries who came to preach and before one of the missionaries died i think in anger or sadness he made a pronouncement over the entire fiji island they laughed it over shrugged it over and swept it under the carpet many years later the fish refused to produce from the river they would plant is there's a documentary crops refused to grow and the people were suffering and then it got to a point where some prayer warriors said no we can't be here they began to pray you see when you don't know what to do pray it is in prayer that what to do comes they began to pray and a prophetic word came that there were legal speakings over that place do you know these people prayed and some other people while they were praying said don't mind these people nothing will happen to their shock that land remained barren until a few people came with spiritual intelligence fortunately they could access the grandchildren of those missionaries that were murdered and when that happened they invited them over it was it was a national ceremony where they apologized to them and they prayed and the people released blessings on the land it was not more than 24 hours go and find the documentary fish from nowhere different species that were missing just came out from the river this earth is mysterious so and there are rules of engagement can i tell you covenants are powerful covenants are not emotional no it is the reason why anything God takes serious in your life, he creates a covenant around it. Marriage, your salvation, when God wants to take anything serious, he does not trust the vacillations of emotions. If God has not brought a covenant to that thing, you will not get his best. Everything that God takes serious, he connects to covenant. And then disobedience having the readiness to judge all disobedience if your own obedience is complete and then ignorance Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart why am I giving you these cues because we are going to pray there are some of us who in our prayer right now you need to plead the blood that i will never have a repetition of what happened to my father and what happened to my mother i have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and in the name of jesus the legal binding the speakings the ill speakings connected to my territory connected to my bloodline what then is the advantage of my encounter with the blood you can you can engage it just because you are born again does not automatically you have to engage it with understanding are you ready to pray now please lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray the blood is our, our basis for access plead the blood upon your life your finances your family that everything that gives the devil legal access over my health, over my life, over my joy, over my peace, over my church, over my spiritual life. I stand by the blood of the eternal covenant and I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, that blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, that blood that advocates my release that blood that advocates my freedom satan the lord rebuke you the blood is against you satan the lord rebuke you failure 
the Lord rebuke you said but the Lord rebuke you someone pray the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you don't be tired of praying the flesh may be weak but the spirit is willing it's been waiting for this chance so that a door be opened over you once and for all Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. There are many of us there are doors that have been opened the truth is when you go to god and say open the door he will tell you i've opened it but another spirit has stood in the place of that door to close it and stop you from passing a great door an effectual is opened unto me he said but there are many so adversaries don't just follow men they follow doors they stand at the corridors of doors they know that anyone who enters this door is going to the next season. Can I tell you this? Look at me, please. Doors connect rooms to rooms. Doors midwife seasons. Between one season and another is a door. Between your kitchen and your living room is a door. So you doors are systems of transition. When that door is closed, you will remain in the same season for a long time someone is ready to break that door open are you ready to pray now you are going to pray that every door doors of ministry doors of influence doors of power doors of higher levels of grace you are going to engage by the power of the spirit those doors must be open right now lift your voice and pray please pray like a priest someone is praying doors be open in the name of jesus every spirit assigned by the devil to stand at the corridor of one season connecting another in my life i come against you i engage by the blood of the lamb i engage by the power of the word in the name of jesus christ go ahead and swing those doors open Go ahead and swing those doors open. We are praying. Your life must carry a testimony of the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. This next prayer point, please listen. If you are a man of God, if you are in business, if you are a leader, anything you are doing that demands influence, please pay attention to this next prayer point. Can I tell you this? One of the greatest areas of attack of Satan over believers is their influence. What is your influence? Your capacity to compel men to buy into your ideologies. The kingdom advances based on evangelism and influence not evangelism alone satan fights the influence of men what does it mean to fight your influence to fight your relevance to fight your voice so that your voice cannot speak are we together two scriptures are you tired be patient oh we are going to pray this morning are we together hmm. 
Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. Help that woman under the anointing. The power of God is coming on someone at the back. For the Lord sustained me. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the lift. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. God is opening someone's eyes right now. Hallelujah. Please, there are two people, just two people. I'm, I just saw light from here, from the stage. The power of God just coming on two people. And I'm seeing a circle just come to an end. Please help them. Two people. I just saw that light. I don't know where they are. Just, just help them right now. The power of God, that light. The Lord is saying that there is a season. By this prayer, as simple as it is, the Lord is bringing an end to that season. An end to that season. Zechariah 1 and verse 18, please. Goodness. Then lifted I up my eyes and saw, and I beheld four horns. How many? 19. And he said, and the angel said unto me, What be these? And he answered, I said unto the angel, What be these? And he answered, These are the horns which have scattered my praise, my covenant, and my peace. Three things these horns fight. My praise, my covenant, and my peace. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. 21. Now he gives perspective to what I saw. Let's go to verse 21. I said, what come these to do? The horns now. And he said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. Read with me. So that, verse 21, keep 21. So that no man did lift up. Will you see the horns physically? You will just know you are trying to rise. It's like there is a peg over your influence. Many years ago in Zaria, when I was in Zaria, the Lord, because it's a highly Islamic place, you know that. And you know that all kinds of spirits and rituals happen daily. The Lord gave me an instruction, a prophetic instruction. Now, this is not a doctrine. This I'm just sharing my experience. From a, a very far, I don't know what distance I would, I would, you know, place here in Abuja. But the Lord asked me from that place to start walking and prophesying over the entire land. Let me tell you, I walked a distance that will be at least 45 minutes to an hour. Not exercise, so praying and commanding the forces, that northern horn that would not stop the purposes of God to rise, to bring it down. Can I tell you, those horns can go down if they meet the right voice that speaks to them. There are controlling powers in every region. You can be in a city and yet spiritually you are out of that city because the gates have not been opened. Believe me when I tell you this. You can have a business within a city and wonder why the doors are not opened. The door to your influence. Why does Satan fight influence? I will tell you because he knows that when your voice truly becomes a voice it will be easy for God to transform people in a moment through your voice is that true you believe that Satan would have wanted this conference to hold look at the lives that have been changed because of one man's obedience through this conference Satan is a determined fighter that's why you can see you're a businessman but you are fighting in the spirit like a preacher because you are the only one calling yourself a businessman. 
Satan is not calling you a businessman. You are as much a threat as an evangelist to him. He does not care what you do. The moment he finds out that there is potential to glorify Jesus, you are a threat. Acts chapter 12. Please be patient We are praying. It takes stamina to pray. Acts chapter 12. Let's begin our reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, please look up. Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Verse 2 now. The Bible says he killed James. You see the killer again. That thief that comes to steal. He killed James the brother of John with the sword. Verse 3. The Bible says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Look at this. Every time you allow darkness to continue, it proceeds further. I can tell you the first thing Satan does in your life is not all he intends to do. He will test you and watch your reaction. When you quietly, passively explain it away, he proceeds further. He started by bringing headache. He says it's just a slight headache. Now you are feeling a pain and you are hearing in your ears cancer. If you don't attack it, he will proceed father satan never gives his best shot he would test and see if you keep quiet and you do not attack he will proceed further please keep that scripture he proceeded further to take peter also so he started with your finances you kept quiet now he's spilling over into your marriage because you have given him room the bible says they were the days of unleavened bread verse 3 verse 4 now and the Bible says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Can you imagine this level of bondage? All to shut his voice. I hope, do you know why Satan was attacking these people? They were the three people who went with Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. Satan was selecting them intelligently to kill them. They are the threefold cord that make the apostolic formation. Peter, James, and John. Now they had killed James. He caught Peter now. See what happened to John. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5. Hallelujah. Read with me. It says, Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. What happened? Verse 6. When Herod would have brought him forth the same night, that's how effective prayer can be. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and the keepers before the door of the prison. Watch what prayer does. Behold, an angel of the Lord in response to prayer, could it be that they neglected something to have killed James? Because the same angels that came here showed that they were readily available. Could it be that there was something they neglected? That James paid the price for. Now they were wiser and said, We will not let this happen again. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And the chains fell off from his hands. Follow with discernment now. And the Bible says, verse 8, the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. And he did so. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Verse 9. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was, he saw a vision. Verse 10. Now, this is where I want you to get the revelation of influence. When they were past the first and second gate, there were three gates that Peter needed to pass to go out back to the city. When Satan withdrew him from the city, he used three gates to lock him. The first gate opened. The second gate opened. Then the Bible says they came to the iron gate that led to where? There is a gate that leads to the city. The city is the place of visibility. is the place of influence. And he said there is a gate that if it does not open, open. The city will never know you are there. The iron gate that leads to the city. The Bible says it opened of its own accord. Can I tell you, 
I know you are doing business. I know you are doing ministry. I know you are doing what you are doing. But has that third gate been opened? You may not be in the prison, but you may not also be in the city. The city is the place of visibility. It's where God makes news with you. The next prayer point is that we are going to smash that gate that opens to the city the gate that controls visibility and influence hear me there are many of us in this city who have products and services that should be patronized at an institutional level and yet because of that that gate does not seem to be open and the city cannot receive you one time I, I spoke with a gentleman, an architect, and sincerely, I stand before God to tell you, when I saw what this gentleman was, you know, what he was doing, I thought to myself, I said, this man should not even be in Nigeria. What level of intelligence? Have you applied anything? He said, yes. When gifted people suffer like they are not gifted, the iron gate has shut them. Because according to the law of value, your visibility should make room for you. It should bring you before great men. If the gate is open, Joseph, you may have the ability to interpret dreams and profess solution, but there is an iron gate that stops you. Midwife in Pharaoh, the palace, your place of honor, and where you are is that gate. Is someone ready to pray? In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray and decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Someone pray the iron gate over your ministry, the iron gate over your business, your family, your endeavor, that gate that fights your influence and your visibility by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus, command that gates to be open not just for you let it be open so your children can pass he said who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates be ye lifted ancient doors pray Rakata bakatos kote bakatos gates of influence efata be open gates of wealth efata be open gates of relevance for the kingdom and for the sake of his majesty be open someone decree someone decree don't be silent Kada prentas kadele katos koto brokoto sigata shania segata bres katuziata ebra katos koto breke dos kadilata. In the name of Jesus. Last prayer point. <laughs> Please look up. How do you know the gate has opened? Mark chapter one. How do you know? The gates of visibility has opened for you. Mark chapter 1. Please let me encourage you. Whoever did not come to church this morning, please give them this teaching. Buy it and go and give them. Buy the CDs and use it as a blessing and tell them, look, I know you will get blessed in other sessions, but something happened this morning that I want you to be part of. Mark chapter 1, let's start from verse 34. How do I know? that the gates of influence and visibility has been opened unto me. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Yes, please. And the Bible says, and in the morning, rising a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place there to pray. Now, 36 and 37 gives you the secret this is the litmus test. You know that the gates have been opened. The Bible says, And Simon and they that were with him did what? Followed after. When you are walking alone, that gate is not yet open. When they begin to see that light rise from you. And the Bible says, 37. Read 37. And when they had found him, what did they say? They said unto him, 
all men let me explain what all men means all men does not just mean many men the Bible did not say many men do you know what all men means all men means all systems all structures all works of life you can have poor men look for you based on the value you provide you can have wealthy men look for you based on the value you provide you can have your tribesmen look for you is that true you can have children look for you you can have elders look for you you can have diplomats look for you but when that gate is truly open all men means professionals the poor the rich the old the young governments gatekeepers this is how you know that the gate has been opened can I tell you this there are many of us what you do would have found greater visibility if certain men had come to you are we together can we still add one more prayer are you tired now you know what it means when the gates are open look at the kind of people who have come to you seeking for you it says even the king shall entreat your favor all men your business your life who has come to glean of the wisdom of the spirit from your life all men because there is a shofar in the realm of the spirit when Gideon sounded that shofar 30,000 people don't ask where they came from they came to hear the wisdom of God upon his life can I tell you when this gate is open the presidents of nations can come to you and say listen I have discerned that the counsel of God is upon you and I will pay whatever price it takes to hear God speak through you is someone ready to pray I like you to declare and call for the nations call for the classes of people that must be captured in your destiny in this season to make for your advancement and to make for your revival lift your voice and pray all men all men seek for thee all men politicians all men gatekeepers all men spiritual people all men those in need for salvation all men those in need for transformation all men gifted people all men burden bearers all men divine connectors all men men of influence and captains of industry because this gate is now open i command the ministry of all men all men in the name of jesus christ hallelujah Let me give us one more prayer point. When it was time for Jesus to step into Jerusalem, the Bible says he was in need of a donkey. He did not have that donkey, but he needed the donkey. And he said, go to a place where the roads divide. He said, you will find a colt. It is there, but there is a condition. It is tied the money that will make the prophecy God said about me not look like a lie is there but it is time the destiny helper who has been sent by God to hold my hands in this season so that I be not discouraged the person is there tired. can I tell you when something is not there and when it is there and tied is the same result you will get and he said that cult was designed i have never seen an adult cult that no man had ridden on what was the owner doing with it then that means a hand was keeping it specially that cult became an adult cult and no man had ridden on it he said when you get there don't just tell it to come it wanted to come all the while but it was time he said i desire to come to you again even i paul once and again but satan hindered us and he said when lose it 
whilst you are losing it chances are excellent that somebody will confront you when they ask you tell them the master Barako Siata. we're about to call some things in our lives now and if the devil says why your answer is the master we're in the season right now why should this new level of anointing come to my life the master had need of it why should my child come in this season the master had need of it why should i acquire my own property in this season the master had need of it is someone ready to pray open your mouth and begin to lose everything that has been sent to you by prophecy lose that next season of your spiritual life lose that next season of your destiny lose the finances allocated for you and if they ask you why tell them it's because i'm in a season where the master had need of my efficiency the master has need of my spirituality the master has need of my resourcefulness the master has need of my influence the king has made a demand and i must respond therefore gates of poverty be shut the king has made a call upon my spiritual life therefore gates of backsliding be shut the king has made a demand on my efficiency in ministry therefore gates of stagnation be shut someone is praying And if they ask you tell them the master had need of it the master has need of my finances in this season the master has need of my prayer stamina in this season the master had need of the spirit of revelation that is upon me the master has need there is a triumphant entry that must happen through my life must happen through my destiny the master has need of the cold therefore lose that cold lose that cold the cold that no man had written on in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus listen before I speak over your life let me encourage you whatever it takes tonight please invite your family members whatever sacrifice it will take for what God is going to be doing over your destiny tonight already for some of you you have an assignment by God this morning's teaching I'm emphasizing again as you are standing here the Holy Ghost is already speaking to you about the person who needs to hear this rather than discussing and trying to give counseling just tell him this is it just sit down and listen your way out of this realm and out of this face Martha Martha you are worried and upset about many things but one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to sit please whatever sacrifice you will make tonight I truly believe by the spirit tonight that with the word of God that will come I've not had the time sadly to pray for the sick and just minister because we have to respect time and I'm happy that we took some time to pray this morning but I want you to come tonight with your heart enlarged and opened one of the things I believe that God is going to do in our lives is to supply the oil and the grace for the next level look let me tell you sincerely 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 you can be anointed but limited the same way you have money but how much in the in in economic realms in in, in the realm of economy it's not just that you have money how much of it do you have if you have one million you will never be hungry 
but you will never be comfortable to. Is that true? 10 million can buy a car, but it most likely may not be able to build a comfortable house. So don't just say, I have money. How much? You must have to the degree that it takes to build that which brings glory to the name of the Lord. There are many of us, this conference is a retreat. You have come, especially for those who are consistently giving, pouring into others. God is creating a platform right now, an oasis, and he's saying you need to come and receive and be strengthened in your inner man. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. I want you to pray over one request. I'm releasing my faith with you. What one thing are you trusting God for? That you know if this is done, it will be an accelerator to your Christian experience. Please pray. Let's release our faith and ask the Lord to pray in prayer that he should step in. Talk to the Lord. Believe what you are saying. What one thing? Many things are important. But in order of priority, there is always that one thing. For some of you, is healing. You need the convenience in your health. You are tired of this devourer that is eating up your body and eating up your finances. Rather than Satan attacking your finances, he attacked your health. Because with it, you will kill two birds with one stone. For some of you, it's your joy and your peace. For some of you, it's your spouse and your marriage and your children. The peace that will allow you to serve God acceptably has not been there. For some of you, it's the work of your hand. You are praying and saying, Lord, prosper, bring increase. It doesn't matter what it is. Pray. Here at Reha IC 2022, we're praying and declaring to the God who answers prayers. Go ahead and pray. Pray. One more minute. Pray while I sing out our song again. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. From the rising of the sun. The setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life. One of the principles of revival and reawakening is the power of the prophetic. When Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus, let me not go ahead of myself. We'll leave that for tonight. But when he stood at the tomb of Lazarus, Lazarus would have remained there forever. But he stood there and he said, roll the stone away. Prove that you believe he can come out by revisiting the case. And he rolled the stone away and he stood there and with the voice of prophecy, he said, finances, your destiny, your marriage, your increase, your new season, wherever you were caged from the realm of the spirit, I send a prophetic word. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Hear what the Bible says. And he that was bound, he came forth. Two things happened to Lazarus. He, when he died, he was bound. It's one thing to die, but then you are bound. Even when Lazarus came out, that's why I said we have a session in the evening. Just because resurrection has happened, does not mean it has stopped. He said, now lose him and let him go. If I leave him like this, he's resurrected, but he's still as good as dead. Because something has tied his hands and feet. The feet for movement, the hand for productivity. All of them tied. He said, lose it and let it go. Let me speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, I stand upon the grace of the angel and the apostle over this commission. 
and over this ministry and by the power of the holy spirit i pray for you the iron gates that has stood to stop your visibility and to stop your influence frustrating your christian experience in the name of jesus we command that gates to be scattered now let that gate be scattered now I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit the weariness you have experienced I'm seeing an angel pour oil on this woman help her I don't know who she is but I just saw oil coming upon her madam in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is telling me that your life will never be the same I'm seeing the Lord is bringing healing for you your back I don't know what it is with your back but I'm seeing healing coming for you there and the Lord is saying I should tell you that there is oil that is coming upon you your life will shift to a new season in a way that will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God for some of you between now and the evening session you will return in a hurry because of what God would have done in your life you will see the wonder working power of this God that we so boast about in the name of Jesus Christ hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.